So this video is a continuation in our series of videos on creating a SQLite database inside of a Swift application. So far we've broken up the functionality of the database into multiple files. So we have a database which is the database class um, which contains the physical database or a reference to that database itself and all the functionality that goes along with downloading data. The next file we have is create, which will create the database itself. And you can see down the bottom here, we've already run this app and we have created or connected to a database. We then have a table. At the moment, we're just concerned about one table, the days table, which is representing the school days. Next is the delete, because we are wanting to delete all the records before we insert them into the database. So we haven't really done an update here by any stretch and it just makes a little bit more sense for the way this is structured that we delete all the records first and then insert new ones as they come up. So today we've got a new file for select and this will run a query to draw out data from the database. So to start with, I'm gonna do a quick func called future days, which will get all the future days out of the database. It's going to be an asynchronous function, which will return an array of day. So day is made up of um, two columns in the database, one called date and one called day. So the day represents Monday A or Monday B on our two week rotating timetable. And the date is the date for that particular day. Next, we're gonna make a query. So the query is gonna be a string where I'm going to select day and date from our days table where the date is greater than or equal to today's date. I'm going to order these by date ascending. So that way I get the newest day, the current day first, and then everything else in the future. So to get rid of this error, I'm just gonna quickly make a days array. And I'm gonna return that empty days array, just to remove that error. So as with everything in SQLite, we're actually doing a reference to a place in the memory to grab a piece of data, which is kind of unrecognizable by Swift. So for that, we use an opaque pointer. So we'll reference this as our statement. So the statement will be the results back from the query. And it's going to be an opaque pointer. It's going to point to somewhere in the memory to grab that data and store it. But there may not be any results. There may not be anything that comes back because of a variety of different errors that come up where the database doesn't exist or whatever it may be. So we're just going to make it optional and it's going to be nil. Now we're going to prepare the query and run it at the same time. So F SQLite 3 prepare. I want to go to my database and run this query. I'm going to store the results in the statement. Does that equal an OK result? So the running of this function will return a result, a response as such. And that might hopefully will be, yes, everything's okay. It ran fine. The query ran without error. So when I run the query, I now have a large table of data with multiple rows. So I'm hoping to have about 40 or so rows in this case. So I want to loop through each one of these rows one at a time until there are no more rows. So we use a while loop. So while I can step through those rows one at a time inside of my statement. While I can do that and there is a row still existing, run the following code. I'm going to let my day 
equal a string describing a string based on this column here. And I'm going to go to my SQL light 3 column. And you can see the different types of columns there. We've got text, we've got int, and we've got the generic blob. I'm going to choose text because this column here is text. I'm going to go to my statement and I'm going to grab the column zero. The first column is column zero. Now this is all quite complicated and that's because we're working from an old type and converting it into a current Swift string. i copy that because that's exactly the same for date. And that will be the second column, date. So it starts at zero for the first column, one for the second column, and numerically incrementing after that. So I now have my day and my date, so I can create a day object. I've now successfully drawn out a row of data. Oh, I can't do that one. Let me call that new day. I've successfully drawn out a row of data, created day with it. I'm now going to add that to my array of days that's going to be sent back. And append my new day. So that'll run through sequentially, one after the other, every single row that comes out of the results of this query. It'll create a day and place it into an array. Now obviously this if statement, where I'm finding out if this query ran okay, if it doesn't, I'm simply going to print into my console and then I know where I'm going to find out where this error was. All done. Now this same function can be applied multiple times. So if I just copy that and paste it in, I'm simply going to do current day this time, where I'm going to get a singular day. Now this gets modified slightly. I'm going to make it equal to today's date. And I'm not going to worry about the ordering. I think I have an error up here as well. Closing speech mark, there it is. So I'm no longer storing a singular day, or sorry, a, uh, a group of arrays of days, I'm doing a singular day. I'm still going to get that same results placed here, stored in my statement. I'm still going to run that same query and check that it's okay. I'm still going to step through the results, because while there's only one result, I can still loop through that one result. However, this time, rather than applying a new day and adding it to the array of days, I'm going to go to my day that I created up here, which I better make a var. I actually don't need to, I'll leave it a let. Day dot day equals the day from my database. Day dot date equals the date from my database. I'm going to return my singular day now. So that's done. Check that one. 
Ah, because I've called this both called day. So I'm going to do my return day. It's going to be a day. That's better. So that's now going to be a return day referencing that day there. And we're going to change the day to that value and return my return day. So again, I need to fix up my little error here. So preparation of database to select current day failed. And we're done. So this is the same for every single possible query you'd like to do. You simply change the query up here to match whatever you're searching for. Now, if you're changing types, you need to change the return type as well. So if you're returning, say, a block or a lesson or something else that relates to your database, that's where you place it there, the return value. And you need to determine whether you're returning a array of that object, multiple objects, or you're just returning one singular object. So you replace the query with whatever you're searching for. Set up your return value. So again, whether it's a array of day, array of block, multiple objects, or a single object. You create a variable for the results of the query to go to. You run the query, make sure everything's okay, and then loop through the results. So while there are rows available, as we step through each row in our query results, we then assign the values from column zero, the first column, column one, the second column, and assign accordingly returning the day itself. Or in the case of up here, returning multiple days where I create a new day and append it to my array of days that I'm sending back. So it really depends on whether you're sending out one object or multiple objects, whether you're returning a array of the object or a singular object.